Hey guys, what's up? It's Greg Srizavasti with the Deepest Dream YouTube channel. I also, this channel also houses two podcasts, Cinematics and Find Your Film. We're not talking about movies right now. We're just going to get right into it. Stranger Things Season 4. This is going to be a very mini review, spoiler free, meaning I'm just not really going to go over plot points. I'm actually posting this video late, several hours before Season 4 starts over on Netflix. You're going to get this first you know, seven episodes. I I was uh, I got the first seven episodes, and looking forward to the last couple too uh, when they when they come out. I believe it's in July. I could be wrong about that, but uh, yeah, I'm just I just finished the seven episodes. I binge watched it for the last 14, 15 hours. I started it last night. Just got done early mid afternoon before the premiere in several hours. But yeah, so for this review, you're not going to get any real spoilers or plot points or things that will make you really, well, some of you really want to know who the new characters are, who they're played by, how they fit into the story. I'm, I'm just going to, I'm not going to do it for this video. I'm just going to give some quick reactions, what to expect from season four. Is it good? Is it a disappointment? You know, et cetera, et cetera. First off, I think I'm, you're going to see from the YouTube thumbnail that I'm giving this season so far the first at least the first seven episodes five stars it just hits it hits on every mark first of all there's a lot of comedy in this even though obviously stranger things with whether you're living in the real society whether you're in hawkins or california or in a russian prison or wherever you are or uh, somewhere in the upside down there's a lot of tragedy involved so th that said there's still a lot the requisite com comedic value that you could get from Stranger Things, if you want, if you love Maya Hawk from doing her one-liners, that's there as well. You know, you're gonna get some Maya Hawk monologues. You're you're gonna get a lot of comedy between among a lot of the ensemble cast amidst all of the the, the real dark moments. And, and look, past a lot of reviews, I'm sure you've read. Maybe some of them are spoiler-free. Maybe some of them are in-depth. They, I think that the big go-to is how dark this season is. And yes, if I would warn you, this could give, I'm not going to say it's going to give me nightmares, but there are some really nightmarish sequences because, well, obviously, if, you're, if you've are if you seen the first three seasons, you know how scary Stranger Things can get, right? But this one, for some reason, it, because of the antagonist, which I'm not really going to get into who the what the antagonist is all about, where he, she, or it fits into the whole scheme of things, but this is a very... This is a very deadly, menacing, and just intimidating, I don't even, horrifying, every single negative word you can throw at this antagonist. It's amazing to actually see. I Actually, actually one of my complaints for the season was, while I was watching the episodes, was this villain was not developed well enough, but as the story progresses, as you binge watch through the episodes, don't worry, you're going to get a fully fleshed out character be, that being the antagonist who uh, and I don't even know I don't even want to talk about how that person fits within the scheme of things within Eleven within her friends does this being reach far into Russia or even Los Angeles or does this being actually just live within the upside down confines of Hawkins you're gonna you're gonna kind of find that stuff out by the time you reach episode 7 okay what else can I say without yeah, why is this movie, why is, uh, not why is this movie, why is this project, why is this season four so far a perfect season for me? One of the things I really love, obviously, is the character of Eleven. And if you are a fan, if she is your one of your favorites, if not your favorite character from Stranger Things, you're going to get a lot of character development regarding Eleven. And she's, obviously, she's suffering from past trauma. The season begins with a very inciting incident which she is pretty much through most of her childhood kept under wraps, you know, like like we all do. We there's there's a maybe a memory that is long buried within our hearts and souls, and whenever we unearth them, maybe some maybe the demons will come out, or maybe some self actualization, self realization stuff will come out as well. You're going to get to really dive into the past, a really pivotal event regarding the makeup of Eleven's character with season four. So on one point, I'm, I'm very happy because the, the, the seven episodes are really heavy on the character development of Eleven. Now, also as far as just great performances, yeah, Sadie Sink, as usual, I loved her in Fear Street, love her in Stranger Things. Her character is fantastic as well, obviously. I don't even want to spoil season three. She, Her character, Sadie Sink, her character, she's suffering from a just a trauma from season three which happened and she's obviously in a very depressed state at the beginning of season four but as 
the her character arc within there's just an amazing character arc within the season regarding how she has to face some of her own character flaws not not just flaws but just some of her just the traumatic incident that she had to face and th- does she get through with it does she survive I, i'm not going to say uh, neither here nor there just know that sadie singh's character she's very very well developed in this season and i don't have all of the names here on my notes and i apologize you stranger things fans i'm not very good with names but she is out of all of this she i think her emotional arc along with eleven's arc in season four so far from the seven episodes are the biggest standouts for me obviously as you know the production design is going to be great there's a ton of action in within these seven episodes everything is really perfectly blended it's just a great gumbo pot of just elements not one goes over it doesn't get too overly comedic too overly gross or sick or disgusting or nightmarish it's just a perfect balance also a really cool surprise and i don't know if you will agree with me on this there are a lot of really interesting moments and usually sometimes in a in a series you're going to get the main characters the bread and butter roles you know the the main people within the narrative of a series they're going to get the sorry for the noise for, with my computer they're going they're going to get the just the plum monologues there is a sequence in stranger things a season 4 i'm not going to tell you which episode but actually my favorite monologue or one of my favorite moments actually comes from a relative newbie within the ensemble so and Speaking of which, sometimes when, I don't know, sometimes when a series adds too many new characters, you're, you're, you're kind of wanting a little bit more. You just want the original back. You just want more time with the original. I'm sure there will be complaints like, oh, you shouldn't, you shouldn't have split all of these characters up there. Some of them are in Russia. Some of them are in Hawkins or LA. Or there's a road trip. There's a lot, of, a lot of them are spread out. There may be complaints about that. I loved it because you just basically, we already know a lot, these characters from that past three seasons. Okay? We, I, I, love to, I would love to get all of them in a room together, but it's the whole idea about Stranger Things is actually exploring and seeing different things. And with season four, you get to see... You get to cover, as a viewer, you get to cover a lot of story with season four. And the length time, I believe the last episode seven, I think it's around 95 to 98 minutes. That feels pretty much like a movie. And there might be complaints regarding the length of some of these episodes. Maybe a lot of there's too much plot shoehorned into these seven episodes. I loved it. I, 75 minutes, 80 minutes, I don't care. Give me 98 minutes of Stranger Things. The more, the merrier. The more minutes you get of every episode, especially season, um, not season seven, episode seven for season four, the fact that it's 95, 98 minutes, I loved it. I, I wish every single episode of Stranger Things was 98 minutes, 95 minutes, maybe even two hours. I wish every episode of Stranger Things could have been a movie. That's just my take. I'm probably a minority regarding just that my absolute love for the series, especially with season four, because like a lot of people are saying, it gets really dark. The kills are gruesome. Okay, there are not. There are people. There are things that are. It gets very uncompromising. So while Stranger Things can be appreciated for, you know, I'm a Generation X baby. So I, I grew up in the '80s. So for me, the initial draw for for something like for something like Stranger Things was not because of the horror element, but it was because of just the, the music from the 80s that I get to listen to. Most importantly, the actors from the 80s that I love, like Paul Reiser and Winona Ryder and Matthew Modine. And ob- obviously, all of them do great work in the series. That was my initial pull for actually getting into Stranger Things. But as the seasons progressed, it's the story and the, the younger generation, the younger characters who continually continuously pull me in and wanting more i i'm a little bit sad i I wish stranger things could go even past a season five but so far i'm not going to complain i'm so thanks to netflix for uh letting me as you know letting me actually see the first seven episodes and review the first seven episodes of of uh season four of stranger things i'm going to look at my notes let me think what else to oh regarding the ensemble cast I'm not going to really mention, you know, there's Eduardo Franco, Mason Dye, there's a couple of other, Joseph Quinn, I'm looking at these names, these actor names, they all do great work. And regarding the ensemble, the ensemble adding new characters, for this season, every single incidental character, co-star, or new ingredient, new actor that is brought into the mix worked for me. While just by logic, 
giving more lines and giving more moments to these people takes away from the moments, giving these moments to the main characters, I'm cool with it because they, it's all really well written. This whole seven, seven episode uh, season so far is just really well written. Also, another beef that I'm sure a lot of people, a lot of you guys have that I do have is sometimes when you leave off a cliffhanger on a, on a streaming service and you're binge watching, that cliffhanger or that final episode might make you actually really annoyed and frustrated because it's too much of a cliffhanger that you really want to see the next episode immediately. Maybe that's a good thing from the um, from the creator's point of view, but for, for me, I just get frustrated. The good thing about by the end of season seven, uh, by the end of episode seven, sorry again, of season four, I think you'll be satisfied. You'll be satisfied with what questions were answered and where the story takes you. There's some really great reveals that you're going to be completely satisfied. Of course, you're going to want to see the next couple of episodes, right? But not, it won't, it won't make you mad. It, it's just, you're going to be satisfied by the end of, of episode seven because some really big questions are answered. And again, the villain in this season is fantastic. Some, and again, and some of the supporting players and actually the supporting players in the series really shine and it doesn't actually make you miss the original actors and the original ensemble because all of the, these cats of character basically everyone in this season i think gets really good enough time and a good enough moment for them to shine but again it's sadie sink's character who's just really really good i, I just f thought that was very resonant and of course uh, who, who doesn't love 11 so you're going to get a lot of 11 backstory and you're going to get a lot of um i don't i was going to say something and i'm going to leave that out but you're just going to get a lot of character ve development from 11 and it's going to hopefully it will satisfy you because it really ties in what Eleven is feeling regarding towards the beginning of the season, towards the end, everything pretty much, at least in my opinion, really come into um, really come come into view. And I thought that was very very satisfying. And I th and uh, of course the Sadie Singh character, who uh, for some reason I'm spacing on her name. I again Stranger Things fans, so sorry for that. She's fantastic in the work that she's given regarding her character arc as well. And are there any? I'm trying to think if there are any complaints. Again, the only complaint was I wanted the antagonist to be more well-developed and scarier, but that complaint evaporated as the season progressed. Tell tell me what you think of Stranger, uh, Stranger Things Season 4 episode, uh, all these episodes. Tell, oh, sorry. Tell me what you think of, of uh, after you binge watch it, comment below. And yeah, you know, this was spoiler free. So hopefully I didn't give away too much and I didn't go deep into the uh, nuts and bolts of what. Oh, one more thing. Growing up in the eighties, one of the one of the cool things about and of Stranger Things is it actually makes me realize or makes me sad over certain music that I missed out on. There is one track by one amazing musician who I completely ignored it through the eighties, and even now at 50, 50 plus, I still ignored. So look, you learn you learn a new thing every day. I'm just embarrassed that I did not listen to this person's music in the eighties. And his or her song is prominently featured in this season. And I'm so glad for all the people who will get to know this musician if they haven't already. And this amazing song, I added it to my Spotify playlist. But yeah, there's so many things that I missed out on the 80s, even though I lived through it. And shame on me for 40 years since, for now, almost 40 years since, for not actually getting into this person's music. But yeah, there's a one, one big song that is prominently featured in this. And I hope... You love it. I think you guys will know what song it is uh, pretty soon, and it's just fantastic. And I'll be playing this iconic song from this legendary musician time and time again. Tell me what you think of the song as well. Tell me what you think of Stranger uh, Stranger Things season four uh, and all these episodes. Uh, it, it's, am I wrong? Are you disappointed, or do you, or are, do you disagree? Is it even better than I say it? Then I say it is. All right. Sorry for all this mumbling and jumbling. Find your film, Cinematics. Those are my podcasts. Check out. Please subscribe, like, and subscribe. Thank you so much if you got, got to this point. And hope you guys like season four. Tell me if you love it or not. Thanks again, guys. Take care. Bye.